Hello, John here from John's Homebrew and Wine Supply, and we're going to talk today a little bit about bottling your beer. So we've brewed our beer, it's in our fermenter, we've been about two and a half weeks in the fermenter, and it's time now to get it away from the sediment that's down in the bottom of this. We're going to transfer it into our bottling bucket, add a little bit of priming sugar in there, and then we'll show you how to transfer that into bottles. Put the capper on it, and we're looking about two and a half weeks for it to stay in the bottles, and uh, then we will be ready to drink. So first thing I want to do before I start sanitizing bottles or anything else is going to be mix up our priming sugar. So we've got our priming sugar here. I've already got it weighed out in advance. I've already sanitized the cup that I'm putting this in also. So this has been sanitized. I'm using bottled water when I do this. I've got four ounces of priming sugar in here. Uh, John Palmer recommends 4.5 ounces, but I found sometimes I get a little bit overcarbonated with that. So four ounces is what I really like to use. So I'm gonna just stir that up, start working on make sure it gets really well dissolved. I'm gonna put it in the microwave a little bit because I find it, it dissolves a little bit better when it's warm as well. I am gonna sanitize some saran wrap to put over the top and we're gonna chill it back down. So let's get it in the microwave just a little bit here. All right, you see that's clearing up pretty good. That sugar is all dissolved. I used around three quarters of a cup of water in that to get it rolling. They were three quarters of a cup to a cup is fine. It doesn't really matter too much. The most important thing is we just want to make sure that that's all really well dissolved in there. So that way it's going to blend with our wort, which is actually beer now pretty good. I am going to put some saran wrap over the top of that just to keep stuff out of it. Spray a little sanitizer on there. This is pretty warm right now because it's been in the microwave. I ended up getting not quite to boiling, but fairly close so that it dissolved good and perhaps killed any organisms that were in the sugar, whatever. It's, it's sanitary, so I feel confident in that. Put this in the fridge to cool while we do our sanitizing bottles, get transferred into our bottling bucket and the rest of it, and this ought to be nice and cool and ready to go when it's time. Next thing we're gonna do is sanitize our bottles. So five gallons of beer it's going to fill roughly 50 to 52 bottles. So that's about two cases of 12 ounce bottles. And it's not a bad idea to have about a six pack or so left over afterwards that are already sanitized. Because the worst thing in the world is when we get down to the bottom of our beer, if we still have some beer left in here and we run out of bottles. So I always sanitize a few extras. Um, it's also kind of nice sometimes to have different sizes of bottles available. Um, all 12 ounce bottles will do great. That's like I said, about 50, 52 bottles. Um, I like to kind of do some 22 ounce bottles. Um, these are all crown top, flip top style bottles are fine as well. This is a 16 ounce size. So once the priming sugar is all mixed together in here, we can do any different size bottles we want. We just got to remember different sizes are going to work a little bit different with our capper, depending on the type of capper we use. So I have sanitizer mixed up all in here. And what I'm going to do, since we had to actually sanitize our, our bucket anyway, we want to mix up the sanitizing solution in there. And I'm just going to submerge all of our bottles in this and then put them onto the bottling tree. It takes about two minutes of time for them to sanitize in here. And uh, then we pull them out, we'll drain them. At the end of this, we'll have all our bottles sanitized. We'll have our bucket sanitized. I'm going to move all that around the edges as well. So before I put my bottles onto the bottling tree, I'm gonna spray it down with my sanitizer just to make sure that all of these things are sanitized as well. Really important with every step along the way, we wanna just try to make sure everything that needs to be sanitized is. So we've got that sanitized. I'm gonna pull my bottles out of the sanitizing solution here now. Got some foam in there. I like Star Sand as a sanitizer. But I'm just gonna drain these and put them upside down on my bottle tree the bottle tree is not a mandatory thing to have. It's just a handy thing to have. You can use towel upside down or something like that. Uh, you just gotta be real careful. You don't tip them all over if, you, if that's the case. So by submerging me here, we're killing two birds with one stone. Like I said, we're sanitizing all of our bottles, but we're also sanitizing our bottling bucket. Another really important thing we want to keep in mind while we're sanitizing these bottles Everything else that's going to be touching our beer here needs to be sanitized too. So I got my spring-loaded bottle wand that's going to go down to the bottom of the bottles. 
Want to make sure that gets its two minutes time in the sanitizer. Some of the bottles you'll notice are still have some foam in them from the star sand. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, don't want to rinse this. It's a no rinse sanitizer. I use star sand. There's lots of equivalents out there. Um, it's just an acid based sanitizer. If we're using an iodine based sanitizer, a um, little bit more important, we want to try to let it drip dry as much as we can. Either way, just turn it upside down, letting them drip in some way is the most important thing. But if, I'm also going to take a little bowl of sanitizer that we're going to use later for our caps that are in there because we want to sanitize those before they're going to go on as well. So I'm going to take that and just set it aside for us to come back and visit later. We are down to the last of our stuff in our sanitizing bucket. Where's my bottom one? So I'm just kind of wiping the rest of the off. Another thing's happening here is I'm getting my hands all nice and sanitized too. It's not going to hurt me at all. Pushing the spring to drain it out there, drain it this way. Just try to get it drained as much as I can. I've also got another sanitized container over here that I'm going to put these things in for the time being just to make sure that they're in good areas where they can drain and sanitize as well. And again, with all of this, we're not rinsing. We're just going to let it drip and get as much of this back off as we can. So put these guys down in there. We'll come back to them later. It's handy to have a clean bucket or things that you can put stuff into. So you'll see I'll use that over and over again as time goes along here. I'm also going to now, we're going to drain our sanitizer bucket. I like to run some of the sanitizer out the spigot so I'm going to do that and then I'll just dump the rest of it in sometimes I like to kind of turn the bucket while I'm doing this just to try to make sure we've got all the areas sanitized beer is not really going to come up around the top but since we can do this we're going to I'm going to Drain that. You also see, I pro probably can see, I have a couple of wood strips down here. It's because the barb actually sticks down below the bottom of this. When I'm up on top of here, it's going to be just fine that it sticks down below because it sticks off the edge like this one. But when it's down on the ground, I want it so it's not resting on that. One other thing I want to do right now, before I get to that point, is we're going to take a gravity reading right now before we add sugar so that way we know exactly what our final gravity was i'm going to take my airlock off the top of the the top there and we're going to drain our beer this is a english bitter let's see what the color looks like here just get enough in there so that my hydrometer is going to float i'm not going to do too much more with this right now but i'll set it aside all right we're just about ready to move our beer into our bottling bucket. I'm going to just drain this one last time because now that it's been sitting just a little bit, some of that sanitizer has run to the bottom and collected and we just want to get as much of it off as we can. If there's some foam left, if there's a little bit of sanitizer left, doesn't hurt anything. It's all just fine, but always good to get as much off as we can. So, all right, we're going to start draining this into our bucket. We got our hose in there. We can see our hose is right across next to the edge so as this comes out it's going to create a nice little whirlpool i'm going to open this up i'm going to start coming out pretty smooth and slow again i want to minimize splashing come on as i'm turning it it's <laughs> and a little bit of sediment gets in here it's okay it's not the end of the world there's a little bit of space below the bottom so a little bit of yeast came out but outside of that we got some nice clear wort coming in I'm going to let there be about two inches or so of wort in the bottom and then I'm going to go ahead and add that priming sugar solution to it. So our priming solution has been in the fridge there. It's nice and cooled down. The reason we want it a little cooler is we don't want to take any chances on it uh, hurting any of the yeast that's in suspension. This next phase of this really relies on that yeast being in suspension and, and uh, enough of it to ferment these sugars that we're going to add in right now. So while that's spinning, I'm just going to add that right there and it's going to mix it all for me. Time to get it into the bottles now. So I'm going to put my bottling wand. So there's a spring loaded tip right here. Push down on it 
and it opens, open it up and it closes. What that means is I'm not going to have to do my spigot for every bottle. We'll put this into the bottom of the bottle, push it down on the bottom, it'll open. I'm going to fill the bottle till it's right to the top. And then when I take this out, the amount of liquid that that displaced is going to leave us just the right amount of headspace in our bottle. This goes onto our spigot like that. We're good to go. And now I'm just going to use this, our, our pitcher again, as a place that I can set this down when I need to. All right. I've got my capper right here. I like to put a little tray underneath my bottles. If I'm just doing it on concrete or on a kitchen floor, or bathroom floor or something like that, I don't worry about it as much, but there's a good chance I'm going to spill a little bit. I don't want it to go on my nice fancy carpet now, do we? Uh, another place where people do this sometimes, if we're doing this in the kitchen, you can open up the door of your dishwasher and do all of this in there. Then when you close the dishwasher, it cleans it up real nicely. So um, this is a single handle capper. There also are two handle cappers. They both work just as good as each of them. We've got a little bell on this. It's going to crimp the caps down around the cap of the bottle. I want to make sure they get sanitized for about two minutes. I don't want to sanitize more than I'm going to do though. So we'll just put a couple handfuls of them in there. Let's go ahead and do a couple of bottles here. I'm going to open that. And now it's filling up. We're going to go till I get to the top and I'll just move to my next bottle. While I'm doing other bottles, I'm probably going to put a cap on the top and then I'll probably cap several bottles at one time. So we'll keep going just a little bit more here and then we'll move to the capper. We're going to crimp these bottles now with the two handle capper. I usually just leave it on there and you just basically crimp them around that with this one. We're going to adjust it. So I'm going to set it into the middle here and then lower this down into place. Just like that. So now we're at a good spot. It's latched into place and this just crimps that cap over the top just like that. I might, I might have it one too high. So, but basically that's it. Let's do one more. I'm going to raise this one notch up. There we go. Once we're done, they're all bottled up. We're going to keep them warm somewhere, just the same temperature we fermented our beer at. So, you know, 68, 70 degrees, somewhere there is real happy. So they have time to carbonate. One mistake a lot of people make is to, to bottle these up and pop them into the fridge right away, but they're not going to ferment or re-ferment in the bottle uh, and uh, not ever going to get our carbonation. What's going to happen in the, in the fermenter, there was an airlock on there that released that CO2 pressure. With the hard cap of the, here, there's nowhere for that pressure to go, so it's going to get reabsorbed back into the beer, and that's where our carbonation comes from. So uh, we'll finish these all up, check back in about two weeks, and uh, see how things went from there. All right, so here we are now. It's been a couple weeks since we bottled our beer. And now the most important part is the actual pouring and the drinking. So I just want to recap real quick what we did. So starting out, we let the beer ferment all the way through all the sugars that were available in the beer. Then we transferred it away from the sediment into a fresh bottling bucket. We added a little bit of sugar so that it could re-ferment in the bottle. And what that means is that we are naturally going to have a little bit of yeast in the bottle. So when any homebrew bottle conditioned beer, there's going to be some sediment in the bottle. So how we pour this is real important. So moment of truth here. We're going to open our bottle. Love hearing that little pop sound. I'm going to pour it in here. I'm going to leave this to about the last quarter inch. Ideally, we don't want to stand this up and set it back down because that's going to disturb that nice little bit of sediment in the bottom. I'm going to keep pouring, keep pouring as we get down to the end. Now there's just a little bit left in there. 
I'm just gonna pour that. We wanna make sure we rinse that bottle right away because if you leave it sitting for very long, it's gonna start molding. You'll have a science experiment and in no time you're gonna really have to scrub it to get it clean. But if we rinse this bottle right away, get that yeast sediment out of there, then uh, it's real easy to clean and we'll be able to reuse that bottle again. So, moment of truth. Cheers, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy bottling. <laughs>